I'm going to take you through the decisive Armageddon game in the final of the Lindor's Abbey Rapid Challenge Tournament. We have Daniel Dubov and Hikaru Nakamura battling it out. They traded wins in this third and final set of the final in the Rapids. But, well, all square after four Rapid games and they went into this Armageddon game. Nakamura won the toss and chose to play with black. That means, of course, that if it's a draw, then he would win the final. So Daniel Dubov in a must-win situation. Now, he switched in this final to playing e4. So that's a change. And he's playing this rather offbeat system with g3. So bishop c5, a, a classical response from Nakamura. And the fianchetto rather reminds me of a closed Sicilian, actually, except instead of the pawn on c5, the pawn is on e5. Um, and white is basically going to try to do the same thing as you often do in a closed Sicilian. And that's go for f4. It's not such a silly system. And Dubov is proving once again that there are so many ways to play if you want to play something a little bit offbeat uh, that still sets your opponent some problems. So why is he playing h3? Well, that's to give his king a little bit of room and take away the g4 square. So there we go, king h2. So now, having stepped away from the bishop, white is ready with the grand plan of playing f4. And why not? This is a, a very decent strategy. If you can, if you can get the, the, the wedge in for, for uh, f4 and f5, driving that bishop back, uh, then white has every chance of a successful pawn storm on the king side. So d5 from Nakamura to counter that. So this is a slight problem for white because after this trade on e4, well, obviously white just hasn't got the center. Um, the, the center opens, so this counters this f4 idea. So Dubov took on d5 and then played f4 anyway. And this introduces a little trap, which is, well, I don't know, to my eyes, pretty well known. You see this in, there's a kind of King's Indian position where you also see this. I'll, I'll show you that later. Here, black could play, for example, knight takes c3 to try and avoid this. This is, this is reasonable. Um, but Nakamura, playing extremely quickly, took on f4. And here, of course, if white just recaptures, well, that's no big deal. Um, black and castle and seems, seems okay for black. But here is the point. In this position, after e takes f4, here's the trick. You can take on d5. With the bishop so this is counterintuitive giving up this bishop that's why people often fall in for this fall into this and nakamura took back instantly with the bishop which seems pretty strange um you know he he's um he seemed to be playing on time basically uh, but he you know this is still early stages in the game he still had time to think he could have taken on g3, so why didn't he do this? Well, this is possible. So the queen comes out. Here's the big idea. It looks across at d5 and also the f7 pawn. And if the bishop retreats, then queen takes bishop. So this is the problem. But actually, it's not over yet because black can play knight e7. And here, the best that white has 
is to play knight takes. So if knight takes knight, then queen takes pawn is mate, the, the weak f7 square. Black exchanges. Now black is a pawn up here, but after this move, that is very uncomfortable. Again, we have this lineup of rook and bishop. So black can castle and c4, and this is actually a very forcing line. And after this, well, black already has two pawns for the piece. White is, white is the piece up. But this is not so clear because white will probably have to give up another pawn um, and black has compensation for the piece. So that's what should happen. But instead, Nakamura took on d5 with the bishop. But after this, well, his position was... It's a disaster. If that bishop comes back to e6, then white takes. I mean, it reminds me of a king's gambit, actually. An opening I've been studying recently with my new DVD. Um, and this is a very common theme that this diagonal opens. You check on h5 and you win the bishop. So the knight came back. And here, actually, this would win straight away. Attacking f7 and attacking the knight. This just wins a piece because if knight f6... Queen takes bishop and no complications at all. But Dubov got all excited and played queen h5. Also very strong because if g6 then queen e5 and the rook is attacked and the bishop is attacked. So c6 and this allows Nakamura to hang on. But it's still pretty fantastic for white. So after this one, pawn takes and knight e6. And this looks resignable. Um, all these points are attacked. And if g6, again, uh, let's see this, g6, queen e5. So queen d6, Incredibly, black hangs on after pawn, knight takes pawn check, king d7, and rook takes pawn. So what's the score? Well, white is two pawns up with a thumping attack, and in fact, it really is too much for black, with bishop f4 coming. Rook f8, bishop f4, tagging the queen, and if the queen steps aside, then queen g4 check. So rook takes rook, bishop takes, Nakamura gives up the queen. He's got a rook and bishop for it, but it should be winning. But remember, this was a blitz game. It's Armageddon. So white has to put this one away. And if you run short of time, anything can happen. And for the moment, that rook is on the second rank. But Dubov kept control. The rook in an excellent position. Rook f8, queen g4 check. The king finds a little bit of security, but white's piece is still incredibly strong. Knight e6. Attacking the rook on f8. The rook steps up. Knight d4 check. So after rook e2, basically Dubov is consolidating. This clears up. Any problems on the second rank? Of course, if the rooks are exchanged, then that makes life much, much easier. So Nakamura avoids that, um, but it looks dreadful. Knight c6, exchanging off that powerful knight on d4, but, well, Dubov reasonably happy to exchange. Important thing is the second rank is covered by that rook. And here it should be a matter of technique. Dubov doesn't panic, but it can still go wrong in a blitz game. So you've got to be a little bit careful of moves like rook g5. But b4, Dubov has spotted that after rook g5, queen d4 check actually wins the rook on f6. So let's go back. Nakamura step back. 
still keeping chances alive, but queen g7 check is a good move. And, you know, he would like to bring the rook into attack soon if the king steps back. So, therefore, rook f7. And that is another pawn in the bag. So Dubov keeping control and just consolidating nicely. Bishop b6, tax the queen, d4. Bishop c7, h4, three pawns up. And the extra queen, it should be winning for white. Just got to keep control, that's all. And move quickly. Rook f1, b5. Of course, this is a good move because it starts to open up black's king and creates uh, another target for white's queen and rook. Rook back to f6, takes on c6. Queen a6 check, and that picks up yet another pawn. Queen takes a4 check. Queen bounces back. It's all going horribly wrong for black. And now the rook moves into the attack. Rook e7 check. Queen b5. And, well, you could take on d5, but Dubov spotted that he could play rook takes bishop check. And that was the final move of the game, because if king takes, then queen c5 checks and you pick up the rook on f8. And at that point, Nakamura decided that enough was enough, even though Dubov was down to his final minute. Well, that one is pretty easy to clean up. So Daniel Dubov kept his cool and won the Lindor's Abbey Rapid Challenge. He said that today in this arm again, he wants to play something something sharp and something strange. Well, he managed to do that with this opening. And he said he felt extra motivation because after Nakamura defeated Carlsen or in the semi-final, well, in fact, before then, uh, Nakamura had proclaimed that whoever wins the match in the semi-final would go on to win the tournament. Well, not so fast. Dubov uh, certainly produced some excellent chess on day three of the final. Just coming back to this, this trick with f4 and then taking on d5 with the bishop and knight takes f4, which was very strong. In fact, let me just quick compare and contrast. This is actually a well-known trick from a variation of the, well, the modern King's Indian. Let me just show you this idea, which you might want to try out yourselves. In this particular variation, and now f5. And here, well, white can play, you can take on c6 or you can play queen d2. But if white plays e takes f5, that is deemed to be inaccurate because black can take the knight and take on f5. And you can see that this bishop has problems and has to come back to e3. But black gets a little positional advantage because this pawn is isolated um, slightly better for black. So there you go this typical trick and and very surprising that uh, Nakamura fell into it. He, he was just playing so quickly in this Armageddon. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us on PayPal or Patreon.com. You'll find the links down there. Thanks for watching.